Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very delighted to be here with you today to speak about uh, some of the examples of electromobility and how we approach this subject within Veolia. But first of all, let me talk uh, briefly about the purpose of Veolia, which is ecological transformation. Ecological transformation is a huge issue and a huge task for Veolia, especially in the Central and Eastern Europe, where Veolia, as you all probably know, is water and sanitation provider, uh, someone who deals with waste management, but also, very important, uh, we are energy producer. In the Czech Republic, we are uh, number two in terms of heat and electricity production in the country. Our basis of uh, heat and electricity productions are mainly in northern Moravia and in the city of Prague. And our main fuel that we use for electricity in the heat production today is coal, either lignite or black coal. So as Veolia decided to go away from coal as part of its ecological transformation by 2030, we have started our transformation program in our power plants in order to switch from coal to other fuels, possibly uh, carbon neutral fuels. So just to give you some examples of what we've done and what we aim to do in our power plants in terms of electricity and heat production. We, uh, in smaller cities, when we have district heating networks that are not too large, so the energy consumed for heat production and electricity production is not enormous, we try to switch to renewables. Renewables, basically, in the district heating network and electricity production is biomass. This is the case of the town of Friedek Mistek already, where we have 60% of biomass that we use for production of heat and electricity, and we will go to 100% next year. In the city of Karvina, we partly switch to coal, uh, to gas, sorry, from coal to gas, but more importantly, we plan to build a new multi-fuel boiler that will help us to, uh, to burn non-recyclable waste, municipal waste, so all the waste that has been already recycled and reused, so what is left that cannot be reused or recycled will be burned in this multi-fuel boiler. This is, the case of, uh, this is also the case of the town of Olomouc and Pserov, where we switch from coal to gas and to uh, this uh, municipal waste. So basically we have several ways to switch from coal to more friendly, less carbon uh, intensive fuels, the most easy and the most uh, used at this time is natural gas. But as we already heard, this is just a transition fuel to be used for electricity and heat production. So we use it and we approach natural gas as a transition fuel, even though for large district heating networks and large electricity production facilities, such as in Prague or in Ostrava, this is a necessity today. We don't have any other solutions. But we want to mix it with some renewables, biomass, use of heat, uh, residual heat, for instance, from uh, from the water treatment plant in Prague. There is a huge project to use the residual heat of the water treatment plant in Prague to inject the heat using heat pumps into the district heating network. We can use biofuels or better convert the uh, biofuels uh, into biomethane and use the biomethane uh, for burning in our power plants and to produce electricity and heat. We have also three interesting projects, two in Moravia, one in Western Bohemia, of production of hydrogen. So where we have electricity product production out of renewables, especially biomass, we plan to install electrolysis production of hydrogen to be used in local, for instance, transportation uh, for municipalities. So now let me move to electromobility within Veolia. It's not, for Veolia, it's not the number one market. It's not the priority in terms of our business focus, but we are and we have always been uh, partners of our customers, partners of our municipalities, partners of our uh, towns, region, and so on. So we want to help them, help them to move from fossil fuels, from use of diesel and petrol to electrical cars. So. 
this is some, these are some figures about what is happening on the market or how we think the market will evolve. Basically, and we have already heard it today, uh, electrical cars and electromobility is on the rise and will become much more important in the future. So we, want, we don't want to be behind that. What we've already started in the Czech Republic, it's a small step, but we think it's a vital one to show that we care about electromobility, we care about sustainable transportation. Uh, charging stations, Veolia charging stations, you can see the uh, example of the design of the charging stations. Uh, we have already uh, installed a few of them, uh, namely in Prague or in Morava region, and these charging stations up to 150 kilowatts of, of power can charge two or three cars depending on the charging station uh, that is used. Uh, this is something that we want to help our partners, municipalities, to develop and to improve the electromobility. So we install it at our cost. We sell electricity that is used for charging the cars. A case study from Prague. A shopping center, a small one, which is called Retail Park Bucharova. What we did here, uh, we installed photovoltaic panels on the roof, 150 kilowatt peak of photovoltaic panels of the, on the roof of the shopping center. We installed 150 kilowatts battery for electricity storage in the shopping center, and at the same time, we installed the car charger. Uh, for, the, for the shopping port. So basically the electricity that is produced from photovoltaic panels is stored in the battery and is also used for this charging station to help cars charge with green electricity coming, coming from the sun. It's a very nice example, uh, very well engineered in terms of overall uh, capacity of electricity connection needed. So there is a management system that controls how much electricity is used, whether there is a peak capacity that is overpassed or not during the day uh, using the, the batteries that help us to manage the overall electricity consumption of the retail park. And uh, my last slide. Uh, a good practice from, uh, from our colleagues from France or from international, uh, as an international achievement of Veolia, a consortium or a common project between Veolia, Solvay and Renault in France, a, uh, a, a project that will help, uh, that will bring the expertise of Solvay, the expertise of uh, Veolia with recycling and obviously Renault as, a, as, a, as an automobile producer. The aim of this project is to recycle the batteries and to recycle the, especially the uh, rare metals uh, used in the batteries for further use. So we, as Veolia, our partners, Renault and Solvay, we don't want to obviously use these batteries just once. We want to re reuse as much of these old used batteries from electrical vehicles as much as we can. So this is why we partnered with Solvay and Renault and we are pre uh, preparing a pilot factory, a pilot project uh, for recycling of, of uh, uh, used car batteries. That's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Jan Karsten and I'm the general manager of Equans. Uh, maybe before I start, I would like to say a big thank you, a big thank you to Renault Trucks to have us here because I think it's a marvelous event and also thank you to the teams of the Czech Chamber, French Czech Chamber of Commerce, uh, which I'm proud to be part of. Thank you very much and I think we can give them a big applause. Okay, let me please introduce very quickly Equence. Equence is the new brand of the NG Group specialized in technical services. We are today in 17 countries and we count 74,000 people. What we do in Czech Republic is much smaller in scale. We have basically two uh, main missions, uh, two main activities. One is technical facility management, meaning we maintain big facilities and we do electrical installation. This both in 
low voltage and high voltage. So in a nutshell, we are the hands that can install for clients like Veolia equipment manufacturers by Schneider. So we are the people, the integrators connecting uh, between manufacturers and operators. Well, today I will talk about uh, the challenge that's behind electromobility in terms of infrastructure. And apologies, I'm not an engineer. I used to be a CFO, and so I had to go to my engineer guys, one is sitting there, and ask them, well, you always say it's complicated, uh, but explain to me, wh what's the challenge behind? Why it's so complicated in terms of infrastructure? And I will try in easy words to share what they explained to me. First, some key messages of what I understood and what I would like you to take away. The first thing, we saw it this morning, it was also said by Veolia, everyone is saying it, e-mobility is a trend that's growing fast. Second point that I will develop is in order to charge fast or many, many vehicles at the same time, you will need massive infrastructure. You will need good infrastructure, you will need to increase what you have today. And third thing, this all might be a little bit complex, and the best thing is planning and anticipation. Three takeaways. Okay, this chart, I think you have seen it many times. Today, we are somewhere here, and within 10 years, we will be here, which means we will go from 2 million vehicles sold in the European Union that are electric to something between 33 to 40 million vehicles sold, which is a factor times 20, if I'm not mistaken. And also the share of electric vehicles will increase uh, a lot. So first takeaway, we are at the beginning of a trend. We are here and it's growing exponentially. Now let's talk about some fundamentals of uh, e-mobility. Uh, today, we distinguish two types of chargers, so-called AC chargers and so-called DC chargers, direct current, alternating current. DC chargers are also the so-called fast chargers, whereas AC chargers are known as slow chargers. That's why I asked my technicians. Well, it's very easy, because when you charge a battery, you need to charge it with direct current. When you plug your car into an AC charger, the conversion to direct current takes place in the battery. So if you want to put more power in the charging system, it's better to do the conversion from AC to DC outside and directly plug DC in the car, and so the car doesn't have to carry all this infrastructure. It's as simple as this. Now some examples, I think everyone has seen it already. What's interesting here for the high power charge that usually the equipments are in two parts. There's a so-called power unit and that's where the electrical conversion from AC to DC takes place. It's kind of the technical back office. And then there are so-called satellite units, which basically it's a user interface uh, when the co uh, consumer comes and plugs his car. Well, now, more interestingly, charging times. I will try to... Can you see the, the screen? If not, I will try to explain. This matrix gives you um, charging times in function of average battery size. So we start here at 50 kilowatt hours to 300 kilowatt hours, which is something that can be found in trucks and buses. And here, the power output of the charging station. The blue area here is where you are able to charge your car from 20% of battery size to 80% of battery size in less than an hour. And the takeaway, what I would like you to, to get a feeling for is that here, these figures, you really need massive power. That's why I put here an example from the old world to make you a comparison, 350 kV, 
that's 475 horsepower, that's a Porsche running full speed. So if you want to charge 350 kV, imagine the Porsche running full speed. Uh, that's uh, what you have to, to, to take away. So to charge fast, and it works also if you want to charge slowly a lot of vehicles, because you simply multiply the power that you use by the number of vehicles, you need massive power and you need robust infrastructure. Also, that's why you now easily understand why we will go from this old habit, which is that we fuel our tank when it's empty, uh, to a new habit where we will charge whenever it's possible, simply because it's slower than fueling our car. Well, this one is a bit complicated, but I think it's really worth you, you understand it. That's a scheme how the electrical grid works here in Czech Republic, and it's approximately the same in all geographies, in Europe at least. Um, we produce electricity, then there is a step-up transformer that, that converts electricity to high voltage, around 400 kilovolts, then it's uh, transformed down to 110, and then it arrives in a urban area. And here it is transformed to 22. And here in Prague you have a network that's underground that's 22 kilovolt. When you build apartment buildings, flats, whatever, you, in these neighborhoods, you build little trafo stations that will convert this 22 kilovolt down to 400 three-phase current, and that's basically what you have everywhere in, in your flats, in apartment rooms, etc. And here, keep in mind this trafo station is approximately as big as a half container. We will come back to it in the example that I will um, give to you in a minute. So, let's look at the example. Imagine we are here together, a logistic company. And we think we need one fast charger, 150 kilowatt, and 10 slow chargers, 11 kilowatt each. So what do we need? We need 260 kilowatt. Now, remember this little kiosk, this little truffle station in your neighborhood. This has a maximum available capacity of 500. Okay, now you can say 260, 500, okay, I'm good, I'm fine. But you are not alone. There are already people connected. There are your competitors. There are people that anticipate more than you, which means you will have to build one on purpose for your project if you want to charge massively or if you want to charge fast. To install this, what will you need? You will need design and you will need permitting in case you have to lie cables across land that's not yours. You will need authorizations from the landlords and you will need to discuss with the grid. Therefore, my third takeaway, it can be complex, sometimes bureaucratic, and it takes time. So, let's conclude and I will try not to be in front of the conclusion. Uh, the trend is here, we have seen the curve. Um, we have also seen that if you want to charge a lot of cars, or if you want to charge them fast, you need strong infrastructure and you need to improve it. So, in order to be ready, what you have to do? Analyze what you need and the utilization you foresee, Look at your available infrastructure. What do you have in your neighborhood? How looks the kiosk with the truffle station? And then build the plan. Thank you very much. Good morning, all. Uh, my name is Vladimir Tichy. I'm a country manager of uh, Schneider Electric. And I have an expert with me. I'm not as brave as Jan Karsten. Uh, I'm going to only introduce the topic because uh, Martin Kavan is our partner, is partner of Schneider Electric for uh, e-mobility solutions. Uh, 
For the opening, the most frequent words I hear from the morning is energy and electric. Uh, mission of Schneider Electric is energy management. And I always try to simplify what we do in a way what we don't do. We don't do anything which consume energy and we don't do anything which generate energy, but we do everything in between. We call it energy management. And our mission is to make sure that life is on, making sure that the energy is sustainable, the energy is reliable, and the energy is safe. Uh, today we're going to talk about real examples of smart infrastructure. Because what I personally see as a big challenge, we tackle the technology, but we have to tackle it smart way, tackling, enabling through digitization. Because that's the only way how to make sure that infrastructure can sustain the massive trends uh, our predecessor speakers were talking about. So with that, I hand over to Martin, and uh, we're going to hear about some real examples we, we try to uh, execute on the daily basis. OK, thank you. OK, electromobility is not a change of combustion engine to electric engine. It's a more complicated thing. It's about the change of system of production of elect electricity, mainly from uh, re renewable sources. It's about the charging infrastructure. It's not only change the cars from the gas to, to the electric. It's more sophisticated things and more complicated. This is habit of typical guy who using uh, electric cars. Mostly they charge at home, about this 60-50%. And are in workplace, commercial facilities, and uh, public station. Previous uh, speaker talk about uh, public, public uh, charging. I will put in details the others. At home. At home, you can see on the graphs, typical charging at home, mostly during the night on the, on the, on the morning. You per day, you are in the work, you are in the public place, you are in the commercial, you don't need the charging at home. You need the charging at workplace, on, in the public place. For charging at home, it's, you don't need a big, big charger. For, it's, it's for, for you, it's enough. 3.6 kilowatt or maximum 11 kilowatt. It's enough because we have plenty of time to charging during the night. Charging for public. If you look on Czech Republic, in Czech Republic it's now about 1,200 public, public charging station. In Europe, mostly in 70% in charging station is three countries, Netherlands, Germany and France. If you look on the maps, you can see a wonderful place in the Czech Republic without charging station. I think it's this picture that's very show where we are and how long way it's in front of us to be like, for example, France or Germany. It's a, it's a small chart about the, between Austria and Czech Republic with uh, electric cars. You can see how many cars is in the Slovakia and Hungary, which is European cars, and how it grow up of numbers of electric cars in Austria. The same is comparison with charging station. You can see Czech Republic, Hungary, Slovakia, you can see Austria. It's a similar country with maybe similar of people, but with similar, and we have the same history. We was in uh, empire, Hungary empire. It means we have the same culture, we are very the same, but if you look on electricity, we are seven years late. In company, if you would like to car, uh, car uh, charging in company, you need energy. It's the first thing what you need if you would like to change on, from the combustion car to, an, to electric cars, you need the energy. If you haven't got this energy, you cannot do anything. One solution for this is a microgrid, I will explain later. It's a system which uh, manage of energy, you can make uh, energy from so established sources and after manage all together. Another thing is uh, commercial charging in offices, in the school, in the car park, and etc. For example, it's kind of for shopping centers is now it's some benefit for them. For example, Lidl, Billa, and Kaufland have free charging for a customer AC. 
you can see in, on the Bila or sometimes some column of cars which would like to charge it by free. But it's, it's the same problem. If this building haven't got enough energy, you cannot offer to customer to charging. If they cannot offer the charging, he haven't got any customer in the future. Because customer will come to the shopping and would like to charge during the shopping. He spent one, two, three hours and more. It means we don't need it. Fast charger in the shopping is enough. 20 kilowatts or 11 kilowatt charger. You know, it's fast in 20, 50 minutes because we spend there more time, not, not minutes, but hours. Now I show you a short video about the future. Our planet faces an energy dilemma. In the next 40 years, energy consumption will increase by 50%, while CO2 emissions need to be halved. The only way to manage this sustainably is to design and build a new energy ecosystem based on a fully flexible, more distributed, and cleaner generation model, supported by a responsive digitized grid that allows people to become prosumers, both consuming and producing electricity. If utilities are to remain relevant in this new energy world, they need to innovate and evolve. They should digitize by leveraging the Internet of Things and integrating their IT and OT systems. Decarbonize by favoring sustainable solutions for local energy production and storage and facilitating the integration of renewables. And decentralize by embracing distributed generation and driving greater operational efficiency built on two-way energy and information flows while supporting customers with services and technologies fit for a new energy ecosystem. By meeting these challenges, utilities can succeed in the new, more electric world. At Schneider Electric, we are driving this change by introducing innovation at every level of the grid. Connected products, control systems, and analytics and services bring together the worlds of energy, automation, and software, enabling utilities to build a brighter, more efficient future for themselves and their customers. Okay, it was a short video about the, our future, that we have to desertification of the, of the sources of energy, we have to use more suitable sources, and we have to decentralize of this. Microgrid. Microgrid is a system of management of use of energy, of production of energy, and storage of energy in most effective way. How it is work, uh, I will show in short, short video. But in future, all buildings should be have solar panel on the roof. We have battery storage. We have management of this in one, one uh, functional, functional things. Now, short video about this, and after I will explain how it work. Everybody knows what a power grid is, but what about a microgrid? A microgrid is a group of interconnected loads and generation sources, such as solar and battery storage, that are connected to, but can operate independently of, the main electrical grid. The beauty of a microgrid is that it can provide resilience when the grid is lost, but can also provide energy efficiency and financial benefits when connected to the main grid. With EcoStructure microgrid technology, you can easily optimize the best times to consume, produce, store, and sell energy. It can also identify threats to the grid system from incoming storms or other disruptions and automatically leverage your facility's on-site distributed energy resources to keep you operational 24-7. And best of all, by maximizing your on-site energy resources, microgrids can reduce your carbon footprint and take advantage of state policies and federal incentives that promote clean energy. Microgrids can be a powerful addition to your energy system if you have or are considering adding distributed energy resources if energy resilience is critical to your business, or if you operate in an area with high energy rates, or your region offers attractive financial incentives. Owning a microgrid or paying for a microgrid up front doesn't make sense for everybody. 
But we have good news. Together with strategic partners, Schneider Electric delivers energy as a service, an innovative business model that allows you to unlock the benefits of a microgrid without any upfront capital. Explore how you can fortify your energy future with proven microgrid solutions and flexible business models that empower you to transform your energy into a strategic business asset. This is the most important things on the microgrid. It's a EMA, it's a ecostructure microgrid advisor. If you, if you look, it's a battery, it's a electric vehicle charging system, it's a air condition, it's a loading system, it's a utility and so solar. Everything is connected one, one, one place. It's a, it's a brain of the system. This brain is, uh, can use autopilot, it's uh, some artificial intelligence. If you, 14 days, wars on the, on the, for example, in the building, he check all in the input from the, all, of, all of these things and find best solution, most effective solution for your building. You don't have to program and spend months and months and some evolution of programs. It's do by self. This is the big advantage of this system. You don't have to you use some very expensive programmator, you only push the button and do everything automatically. And now I'm so very proud to introduce the first project of microgrid in, I think it is East Europe. It's uh, almost two years when we meet with uh, Mr. Tichy in Ostrava with historical steelworks, and we began looking for solution for car dealer which haven't got enough electricity for developing of out electromobility. And after two years of our preparation and looking for solution, we find it and I would like to introduce you. It's a first car of a dealer with a microgrid. It's not only visualization, we began realization next week and hope in two, two months it will be done. And the next time when we meet, we can meet there. I think in spring we, we open. It's included a uh, a solar power station with 110 kilowatt peak, battery, battery storage 125 kil kilowatts, car park, carport, it's a car a parking with covering with uh, solar panels with for 20 cars with 10 of uh, chargers. All this building will include 27 chargers. It means it's a future because if we switch to electromobility, it's not only for five, six, seven on charger on the one place. It's hundreds. It will be hundreds. It means it's for car dealers. It's minimum have about 20 or 30 chargers in the front in the future. And that's all. That's the future. And that's it's also what we done today. <laughs>